When viewed on a geographical map, Nepal appears as a small nation nestled between the two giants, India and China. Yet through the lens of genetics, Nepal emerges as an evolutionary corridor, a place where tens of thousands of years of human history are compressed into a narrow landscape, forming one of the most complex and diverse genetic structures on Earth. Here, humans have not only survived the harsh conditions of the Himalayas, but have also adapted, intermingled, and evolved in ways that modern science continues to uncover. Since prehistoric times, the Himalayas have not been a barrier, but rather a biological bridge linking South and North Asia. Waves of hunter-gatherers from the ancient Indian plains moved northward, while communities from Tibet, Sichuan, and Yunnan descended through river valleys. The interaction between these two migratory streams gave rise to pre-agricultural communities in Nepal, within which remain deeply ancient genetic components distinct from those found in modern South or East Asian populations. According to numerous archaeological and ancient DNA studies, humans have inhabited the Himalayan region for at least 8,000, 10,000 years, contemporaneous with the period when the first farmers from Mesopotamia and the Indus Valley began developing agriculture. These hunter-gatherers carry genetic signatures characteristic of South Asian foragers, distinct from both East Asian and Central Asian populations, and they are likely the ancestors of present-day indigenous groups such as the Kusunda and the Rote. The genetic structure of Nepal can therefore be divided into three main layers, which overlap and intersect across the geographical landscape, yet remain clearly distinguishable in terms of genetics and anthropology. The first layer is the East Asian or Tibeto-Burman lineage, originating from the north and east, characterized by populations that migrated across the Tibetan plateau. They are primarily found in the highland regions such as Solakumbu, Mustang, and Dolpo, with notable representatives including the Sherpa, Tamang, Gurung, and Magar peoples. In their DNA, common Y-DNA haplogroups include O3, A3C, and DM, 174 genetic markers associated with ancient East Asian populations. Mitochondrial DNA, maternal line analysis, also reveals a strong presence of haplogroups, A, C, D, G, and M, nine groups typically found among highland Asian populations. The second layer is the Indo-European or Indo-Aryan lineage, which entered from the south, primarily from the Gangetic Plains. These groups brought with them Indo-European languages, Brahmanical religious traditions, and a stratified caste-based social system. Genetically, this component is marked by the Y-DNA haplogroup R1AZ93, a lineage characteristic of ancient Indian populations believed to have originated on the Pontic Steppe and migrated into the South Asian subcontinent around 3,500-4,000 years ago. Within Nepalese populations, R1AZ93 is strongly represented among Indo-Aryan speaking groups, particularly within the upper castes. The third layer represents the ancient indigenous lineage. Nearly unique to Nepal, and now preserved only among small groups such as the Kusunda, Raute, and Chepang. They carry extremely ancient genetic signatures, diverging from other populations since prehistoric times. Whole genome studies reveal that the DNA of the Kusunda does not fit within any East Asian, South Asian, or Central Asian cluster, but instead forms an independent vector, reflecting an ancestry that predates the advent of agriculture. Some hypotheses suggest that they may be the descendants of the very first humans to set foot in the Himalayas more than 40,000 years ago. What is remarkable about Nepal is that these three genetic layers have not completely blended. Although they overlap geographically, social, linguistic, and religious factors have allowed each to retain its distinct identity. Consequently, Nepal's genetic structure is described as a structured admixture, a form of organized genetic mixing shaped strongly by culture and by endogamous marriage practices. Within this genetic landscape, the Sherpa people stand as a vivid example of the power of natural selection. Living at altitudes above 3,000 meters, where oxygen pressure is only about two-thirds that of sea level, they are still able to live, work, and reproduce normally. 
Genetic analysis of the Sherpa genome has revealed the presence of the EPAS, one variant, a gene regulating the body's response to low oxygen, which originates from the Denisovans, an extinct archaic human species that lived tens of thousands of years ago. This variant enables the Sherpa to maintain lower hemoglobin levels than lowland populations, reducing the risk of blood thickening and heart disease at high altitudes. It remains one of the most striking examples of human evolution through modern natural selection. Beyond EPAS-1, other studies have identified numerous genes under selective pressure in the Himalayan region, including EGLN1, PPARA, ESR1, and COL1, 1A1, all associated with vascular structure, energy metabolism, and cellular regulation under hypoxic conditions. Some of these genes are even linked to reproductive success at high altitudes, suggesting that evolution has not only enabled humans to survive, but also to sustain their lineage in such extreme environments. In contrast to the high-altitude Sherpa, the Tharu people of the lowland Terai region are renowned for their resistance to malaria. Genetic analyses reveal that they have an unusually high frequency of alpha thalassemia and HBE variants mutations that are typically considered disease-causing elsewhere but here provide a survival advantage, as the malaria parasite Plasmodium falciparum cannot thrive effectively in abnormal red blood cells. As a result, in the humid tropical environment, the Tharu exhibit significantly lower rates of malaria infection. This stands as another clear example of microevolution, a process in which the environment directly shapes the genetic structure of a population. When viewed as a whole, Nepal is not only a crossroads of Asian genetic lineages, but also a natural laboratory of evolution. Within a country smaller than the United Kingdom, one can observe nearly every level of human adaptation, from resistance to cold and hypoxia to defense against infectious diseases. The distribution of Y-DNA haplogroups in Nepal is therefore remarkably diverse. R1A and H1 are characteristic of Indian ancestry. O3 and D, one trace back to East Asia, while F and C represent rare, ancient remnants that can be traced to Paleolithic era migrations. Modern genomic studies have revealed that genetic diversity in Nepal is twice as high as in many other parts of Asia, with unusually elevated levels of heterozygosity and FST values between communities. This indicates not only the convergence of multiple migratory waves, but also strong genetic preservation within local groups, each community functioning as a distinct microgene ecosystem. If DNA tells us where Nepal came from, then culture reveals who Nepal is. Like its genetic makeup, Nepalese culture is the product of continuous blending and evolution. Stretching from the Himalayan mountains to the Terai plains, each community preserves its own fragment of this greater whole, reflecting the migration and adaptation history of its ancestors. Indo-Aryan-speaking groups in the Central Hills may carry up to 40% East Asian ancestry, while some tibeto burman speaking communities in the highlands possess as much as 30% South Asian genetic heritage. The Indo-Aryan groups of central and southern Nepal are deeply influenced by Hinduism, expressed through the caste system, ritual practices, and patriarchal family structures. In contrast, the Tibeto-Burman peoples of the northern and eastern mountains follow Tibetan Buddhism, Vajrayana, with monasteries, ceremonies, and languages shaped profoundly by Himalayan culture. These two major belief systems do not exist in isolation. Instead, they interweave and influence each other, giving rise to unique forms of syncretic religion. In Kathmandu, it is not uncommon for people to pray at a Hindu temple in the morning and a Buddhist stupa in the afternoon, a rare testament to Nepal's religious harmony. Nepal's music, architecture, and rituals also reflect this multi-layered cultural genome. The lively Tamang Selo folk songs, with their distinctive damfu drums, embody the East Asian roots of the Tamang people. Meanwhile, Bajans and Maithili folk songs from the Terai echo the tones of ancient India. In the highlands, the Sherpa continue to honor mountain deities through rituals tied to snowy peaks and glaciers, landscapes believed to be the dwelling places of gods. This diversity is equally evident in cuisine, where each region adapts its ingredients to the terrain. In the frigid highlands, people favor thupa, Tibetan noodle soup, and momo, steamed dumplings, while the lowlands are known for rice, lentils, and curry. Even dietary patterns reflect genetic heritage. 
High altitude populations consume more meat and fat to cope with limited energy availability, an expression of metabolic adaptation shaped by natural selection. In Nepal, culture and genetics do not merely coexist, they interact dynamically. Linguistic, religious, and geographic boundaries have helped preserve genetic stratification, while interethnic marriage, labor migration, and syncretic faiths have blurred those same boundaries. Together, they form a living tapestry in which DNA and tradition mirror, shape, and sustain one another. To this day, Nepal remains a white zone on the global map of genetics, meaning that many regions have yet to be fully sequenced. Yet this very lack of exploration makes Nepal a key to understanding human evolution in Asia. Just as Europe has the Denisova cave and Neanderthal sites forming the foundation of its genetic narrative, the Himalayas with the Sherpa, Tharu, and Kusunda peoples represent a second Europe of modern evolutionary history. From an anthropological perspective, each ethnic group in Nepal represents a layer of historical sediment. Within their DNA, one can trace the ancient migration routes, climatic upheavals, and survival choices of humankind. Their genetic structure tells not only the story of who arrived, but also of who endured and who adapted. In the future, scientists hope to expand ancient genome research in Nepal to pinpoint the exact timing and directions of the earliest human migrations across the Himalayas. In summary, Nepal is a condensed map of human history, a crossroads where East meets West, the ancient meets the modern, and biology intertwines with culture. Here, Denisovan genes encounter Indo-European ones, hunter, gatherers meet nomads, and ancient genetic variants continue to coexist with modern humanity. Within each of their cells, science can read the story of humankind not through written records, but through the living sequences of DNA itself.